Hi, this is Professor Stugard, and in this video, we are going to use Python to create a spam detection uh, filter using the Naive Bayes algorithm. All right, so I already have my Jupyter Notebook open. I uploaded my CSV file to, uh, let's name this, uh, how about spam filter? Um, all right, so uh, let's get started. So as always, we want to install our packages first. And in this case, we're gonna be doing a lot of coding. So we wanna make sure that we comment everything that we do. Uh, so we comment with the pound sign, the number sign, the hashtag, depending upon what generation you're from, I suppose. Uh, and so again, the first thing I wanna do is just import uh, packages. So again, I am going to um, basically comment every single cell so that I know what it is that I'm doing in each case. Um, although it's pretty obvious here because when you import, you're literally using the import function. So the first thing we need to do is import pandas. Um, again, that's how we really manipulate any of our data frames. So as PD, um, I'm also going to import, oh, import numpy. NP. I don't think we'll use it, but just in case we do, always good to have it. And now I'm also going to start importing some different functions and some different functionality from the main machine learning uh, package that we're going to use. So this is going to be done a little bit differently than simply importing. What I'm going to do is, again, import basically specific parts. So I'm going to use the from function. And so from SK learn, and again, that's the, the big overarching package that we're gonna use for machine learning. It's kind of the standard. Um, you'll see it linked elsewhere. Um, we're gonna take a couple different pieces to create our model. So the first thing I need is um, from SK learn, we're going to, again, use that, that dot, that modifier. So SK learn, SK learn dot, uh, model underscore selection and from that I want to simply import the train underscore test underscore split because again whenever we create our models we need to have our training data and our testing data well how are we going to split our data randomly well this is the function we're going to use and again it comes from sklearn dot model underscore selection then the next one we're gonna do is again from SK learn, except this time from dot feature extraction. So feature extraction, um, again, how do I pull features out of my well, data? And this is text. So it's actually going to be feature extraction dot text. And what I want to import from there is going to be um, my, um, count vectorizer. So again, if you remember from data science, it's really nice to be able to vectorize our data to be able to run one function that works on every single observation in a particular vector in my data frame or a particular variable. Um, and this count vectorizer is going to let us do word counts um, across our entire um, data set, so count vectorizer, oops, vectorizer. All right, so we need our count vectorizer, and again, that comes from, like I said, the sklearn.featureextraction.txt. Um, and then there's one last one we need, and that's going to be our actual model that we're going to use. So from sklearn. Dot, um, now in this case, we're going to do naive Bayes, and I only want to import, so in this case, there are actually three different ways that we could run Naive Bayes um, as, a, as a classifier. And again, I'll link to that elsewhere. Um, but in this case, all I really need is the multinomial NB, Naive Bayes. All right, so again, I have my two packages that I kind of always import just in case I need them, and then I'm gonna specifically pick three functions that I need for this project. Um, now, again, admittedly, when you're doing your own project, a lot of times you kind of just import the functions as you need them. Um, so you're like, oh wait, I need this function, I'm gonna import that in that individual cell. 
But in this case, I'm going to kind of group it all in the beginning uh, here. So let's hope I didn't make any mistakes. So shift enter. Good. No errors. So that all probably loaded pretty well. So I imported my packages. Now I need my data. So import the data. And like I said, I already made sure I uploaded this um, into my Python notebooks. So this is going to be my spam data frame. So spam underscore df equals. And from pandas package, we take our read CSV. And then again, I can use tab to help me scroll down. Once I hit there, alphabetical order. And spam CSV. Oh my goodness. Scroll all the way down. Spam CSV. And there we go. And we can uh, make sure that it actually came in right. Again, we can always inspect our data. So I'm going to inspect this data frame. And again, I'm going to comment that. Oops. Enter. And then just spam underscore df. Um, we'll run that and we see, okay, so yeah, we have our count, which is usual. And then all of our data here is categorized. We have ham or spam, ham being a normal email. Um, so again, okay, we can see the first one, a normal email, go until strong point, and again, the message is the, the text in the actual message. So ham, ham, spam is free entry into two. All right, so yeah, we can see we have, uh, again, a ham and spam. We have our messages, so again, our data frame is um, again, pretty much just the message and whether it is ham or spam. Um, to make sure we have enough data to actually really do our analysis, um, I'm actually going to, besides just inspect my data this way, I want to make sure that I have enough of it to actually run. So. Um, what I'm going to do is use the group by function, which again, we use that in R as well, although in this case, group by has no underscore in it. And how do I want to group it? Well, I'm going to group it by uh, what type of email it is. And we can see that that is going to be called the category. Make sure you capitalize because it is a case sensitive language. So group by the category. Um, and again, typically we could just run this code in R and would be useful in this case it ran it said okay i did that for you but we didn't actually see what it did all right we need to include one more function at the end there and that is dot describe i want to actually describe what this looks like oops let's make sure i spell that right dot describe ah and there we go so we see that um, we now have it grouped by the category right it grouped it by in terms of ham and spam where my normal messages, there's 4,825 of those, 515, no, 500, hmm, 4,516 are unique. Um, being that the most common one was just, sorry, I'll call you later, which showed up 30 times. So again, that's kind of normal, right? When we're typing emails, kind of shorthand, we might repeat emails over and over again. Um, and then similarly with spam, we have 700 and 47 spam emails, but only 641 of those are unique. You get sent the same spam message a lot. Um, and we see that, please call our customer service representative showed up four times. So um, again, we have over 4,500 unique um, good emails or normal emails and 641 spam emails. So this is probably a robust enough data set to actually draw some conclusions, right? We, we wanted to make sure that we had a good mix of both so that we'll be able to classify them as one or the other. Um, and that seems to be the case. All right. Now, what I want to do though is kind of vectorize this, turn my either ham or spam into numerical values instead. So the way I'm going to do this, first of all, I'm going to start with my, um, my spam data frame. And what I want to do is create a new column. And so the way I create a new column is, again, kind of similar to what we did in R. So I'm going to create a new column that's just called spam. So um, use quotes or, or even a single apostrophe. So my new column in my data frame is going to be called spam. And then to define what it is, I use the equals. So again, it's kind of like setting up our identifier. And what is my new column going to be? Well, I'm going to start from my spam underscore data frame. And what I want to do is 
take that variable category um, and again make sure capitalized because that's how it is in the actual data frame we put it in quotes and what I'm going to do is again I'm creating my my new column in my data frame is going to be called spam the way I define that is I'm going to look at the column category and I'm going to apply so this is one of our vectorizations I'm going to a, apply uh, some sort of if else control flow statement in here now typically what we do is we create kind of a, a, a dummy function here using lambda um, it just makes life a little bit easier in Python so in my apply function I'm actually going to create a uh, lambda function which takes a single variable x so again this is kind of like a user defined function inside of our apply function um, so again lambda is going to take one argument it inputs one argument which we're going to store as x and it's going to be from that category column and so what we're going to say is that uh, spam is going to be one if x is equal to and remember the double equals spam so if it's spam, it's going to replace that with just a one, and then I don't need a comma, and then else make it a zero, just else make it a zero, um, and we run that code. No errors here. So let's take a look at what actually happened. Again, let's inspect our data frame. So my spam data frame. What happened here? Um, so again, I still have my category. I still have my message. All that stayed the same. But now I created my new column mm -hmm. called spam. And it is a zero if it's normal, and then a one if it's spam. So again, by, by creating a numerical, var val uh, numerical var variable here, um, either zero or one, either it is spam, which is a one, or it's not, it's normal email, so it's a zero. Um, it makes uh, doing, well, math and creating my model much, much easier. All right, so we know it worked. So I'm going to get rid of that. I don't really need it. Because what I want to do next is actually, now that I have my data set uh, kind of formatted the way I want, I want to actually um, do my training data, test split uh, and test. So uh, first of all, let's make sure we go back and comment what we did. It worked. So what I was doing here is I was turning the spam ham into uh, numerical data creating a new column a new column called spam all right perfect so now uh the next thing we want to do again we'll label this we're going to create our uh train test split all right and so um Gonna get rid of that. Good. So here I need to create uh, my my split, right? Split my data up so I have my training data and my testing data. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to create uh, two different variables for my testing and my training. Uh, so for the first, so we're gonna have basically my x variable. So it's gonna be x train and x test, y train and y test uh, for the two variables and the nice part is again using uh, that function that we imported earlier we can do this all at once where basically my x variable is going to be the content of my emails those are going to be my features right um, that's going to be all my information that I use and then my y variable is my label either it's a spam or not either it's a one or a zero um, so we have our two variables. We have all of our features, and then we have our label, all right? And that's going to be our X and our Y. And so we're just going to use, again, the uh, train test split function that we imported from up here, right? And again, like I said, generally you would actually import that function in the cell itself. Um, so that you kind of just import things as you, you need them, but we knew that was going to happen. All right, so um, how am I going to split my X and my Y variables? Well, so we have my spam data frame. 
Uh, and my X variable, like I said, is going to be the message, right? That's going to be my features. My features come from uh, the message. That's how I make my prediction. So um, spam underscore data frame dot message. And then my Y variable is going to be from my spam data frame dot uh, the spam variable that we just created. All right, so we'll run that. No errors, so that means it probably worked. If we want to inspect this, let's say I want to see, all right, well, like what happened when I created X train? What is that actually giving me? And we can see, ah, so it randomly chose values and we have our message and it's just our message. There's no, um, there's no spam, ham, there's no count, right? We don't know whether it is or it isn't. Uh, but again, the nice part is when we use that function, it's split it equally. So we'll be able to compare uh, the X and the Y values. If we want, we can also check this out by using that describe function again. And if I run that, we see that, all right, we have 400, no, sorry, 4,179 emails were preserved there in my split. Um, and we have everything, um, again, we're, we're looking at just the, the overview. Now, one thing we can do here as well, inside my train test split function, again, we defined all of that. I can also go ahead and um, define exactly how much of uh, the data I want to preserve for my testing. And we can actually do this with validation as well. Um, but if we wanted to, we could be specific and say test size equals and the proportion 25 uh, or the proportion 0.25 for 25%. I can run that. And then when we see the describe, we can see, ah, okay. That's actually the default. By default, it does the 25-75 split. So I didn't necessarily need to include that, but it really didn't hurt that I did either. Um, okay, so now that we have our, our data frame, well, like I said, I, when we looked at just the data frame itself, we just have uh, just the words, right? It's just the words. What I wanna do is count how frequently each of these words show up. And that's gonna be the other function that we had in there, my count vectorizer. So um, here, let's get rid of that. So now my next one, I am actually going to find the word count and store this data as a, uh, a numerical matrix. I wanna turn this all into numbers. All right, so how am I gonna do this? Well, I'm gonna use this count vectorizer function that we already imported uh, from my sklearn, um, but I'm gonna redefine it. So I'm gonna say CV equals my count vectorizer function. Um, again, capitalization matters. It's using the camel case. So the C is capitalized, the V is capitalized, and I need to include my parentheses here. So. This is kind of an annoying part of Python and I'm not gonna get into the nuts and bolts of it, but basically we need to initialize our instances for our different functions or else it's going to assume we need to supply more arguments than we really need to. Um, so by doing this, we can still use our convenient notation and it's actually going to work. So again, I need to basically redefine uh, my function, which is nice. Again, I can create an identifier for my different functions. So CV equals my count vectorizer function I already imported with the parentheses at the end. We need those parentheses at the end. And then I'm going to take my X training data. But again, what I want is actually my word count here, um, which is going to equal CV, the function I just defined, dot. So I'm going to take my count vectorizer. I'm going to apply it, I need to fit underscore transform. So again, this is transforming my, my, my messages, all this text, the CV turns it into a word count, the fit transform is going to turn it into a matrix. Um, and again, we need to do the fit transform here to make sure the matrix takes account all the words here. And again, I'm applying that to my X underscore train data and I need to include that I want my dot value. So just give me values. 
All right. So again, if, if some of this is confusing at first, that's okay. We're just kind of getting started. Uh, this is the code that works. Uh, make sure you copy it exactly as it appears here. I'm gonna run my code and, oh, that's awesome. I really didn't get any errors. So that means everything must have worked. Um, and if I look at X train count, which again, this is going to be the numerical data that I actually use to train my model on. If I try to run it, I see that, all right, I have a sparse matrix. It is 4,179. So again, those are the rows. So that's how many messages there are. And across those messages, it is 7,463 columns wide, which means there were four or 7,463 unique words that appeared across all of those different emails. And those are all stored as integers because they're either stored as zero or one. Either the word appeared in the message or it did not. So again, the rows, each of the rows are my different emails and each of the columns is just a zero, a one, or maybe a two, or again, it counts however many times that word shows up. So the zero means that word doesn't show up at all, but again, each column is its own specific word, its own unique and specific word uh, based upon this. So even when I actually see what this looks like, I can then up do my, um, take the X train on uh, count and do dot to array, array being a fancy word for matrix. I can run this um, and okay, it's all, it's all zeros and dot, dot, dots, uh, because again, we're, uh, the, the words that it picked first really must only appear in like one of the, the emails. So the first word doesn't appear in the first three emails or the last three emails. Looks like those words are missing from there. But again, I, I assure you that in the middle of the matrix, there's definitely ones and twos. And if words show up more times, uh, it shows up that way as well. Um, but again, really what we're doing here is we have that matrix of values. All right, so let's recap. We took our data frame, which was all uh, unique messages that were labeled either ham or spam. What I did is I turned that ham or spam classification into a one or a zero, where one was spam and a zero was just a normal email. Then I split my data, put 25% of it into my training model and save 25% for testing, where I had to denote that there were two parts. There was the, uh, the features, which are the word counts, and then there is the label, which is uh, spam or not spam. All right. Um, so now it is actually time for us to train our model. So our next line is to train our model. And Again, just like I had to do with the count vectorizer function, I'm going to do it the same thing here with my multinomial naive Bayes. So I'm just going to call that my model. So model equals uh, multinomial and B with the parentheses. Again, same idea. I got to make sure I include my parentheses here. Um, so that's going to be the function that I use. And so from this model, model dot and now i'm going to have a bunch of different options uh for how i want to actually analyze my model but the first thing i need to do is take this model and actually fit it so model dot fit and how am i going to fit my model how am i going to train my model well it's with the my x variable so the x train underscore count right my word count and i need to train those features those are my features right those are the first argument is my features I need to train that against my y train data, which was already numeric. So I don't have to worry about making that into account. That was one of the good parts about turning it into a one or a zero. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, I can just do the train. And if I run enter, my output says, okay, multinomial naive Bayes. We ran it, we fit it, the model is there. So, okay, um, how do I know if my model worked or not? Well, I could certainly use my testing data and say, okay, well, now I'll do my model and score it using my testing data. But before I do that, let's actually uh, kind of do a little bit of validation by just kind of creating our own emails here. So um, let's create a new uh, variable here. I'll call it email underscore ham. We'll start with one that 
should be a valid email. Um, and so email underscore ham equals, I'll put in the square brackets and then quotes. And I'm just going to type some message that sounds like it's a normal message I would type my friends. Like, um, let's say, hey, want to meet up for the, the game. All right. So uh, that's going to be uh, my first message that I want to test. That's it written out as text. Of course, I'm going to have to convert that into a word count. So email underscore ham underscore count equals. And just like I had to do up here with my training data, I'm going to use my count vectorizer function. So CV dot. Now, here's the thing. I just want to use just the transform function, not fit transform. Fit created my, my dictionary that I'm using to build my model. That's already done, so I'm not going to do a fit transform. I just need to transform, uh, again, from my email that was ham. And then what I can do now, so good. I now created that email. I got no error messages there at all. And so let's add another line. So now I'm going to do my model and I want to predict what's going to happen. So again, this is a really nice function uh, about creating these different uh, models. I can actually do predictions and, and kind of do almost a pretest before using my testing data on just uh, random examples. So I'm going to predict what is my model going to say for email underscore ham underscore count. Um, again, I want to use that, that numerical count to put it into my model and I run my code um, and my array comes back with a zero. Remember zero means it is not spam. It's a ham email. It's a normal email. So that's good, right? It looked at, hey, want to meet up for the game and said, nope, that's not spam. Let it on through. Um, so let's say this is our hashtag pretest ham. Now let's do a pretest spam email too. All right. Um, so email underscore spam equals brackets parentheses or brackets quotes. And here's the crazy part about naive Bayes. Remember, we just converted every email into a word count, but it doesn't matter which order the words are in which is kind of mind blowing. So I can just pick random words, like maybe random words that I would expect to show up in a spam email, like reward, uh, money, click, I don't know, pick something else, I don't know. Um, which obviously has no context in the English language. Like that doesn't even make sense. The order of the words doesn't matter. Naive Bayes ignores the order, it only looks at the word count, that's it which feels like it shouldn't work, right? It doesn't feel like you should just be able to pick random words that have no order and somehow Naive Bayes figures out whether it's spam or not, but it works. Um, and, and actually famously, uh, back when the first email spam detectors had to be developed, you know, like 20 years ago or so, um, you know, obviously Microsoft was one of the first ones and the programmer came up with this, with this naive Bayes algorithm for detecting spam email. And it actually went to, to Bill Gates, who was actually still kind of running Microsoft at the time. And he was like, well, wait, that shouldn't work. Even Bill Gates said that this is like elf magic. It, it shouldn't work. We see that it works. We actually know why it works. We've gone through why the algorithm works, but it's still kind of mind blowing that through just word counts, we can determine whether an email is spam or a normal email. Um, and we'll see how well it actually works in just a second. Okay, so uh, I created my spam email, which is just the three words, reward, money, click. And so I need to do the word count. So email underscore spam underscore count equals CV dot transform email underscore spam and then I'm going to use my model to then predict email underscore spam underscore count and let's see what happens yep it came up with a one 
which means it predicted that this was going to be a spam email. Um, I actually suggest that you kind of play around with this um, and, and you know, choose different phrases. Uh, see what works and see what doesn't. Because I think this is just kind of interesting because, again, I can take a normal email and I can just put random words like maybe baseball, um, tickets, and the word later. And if I run this, it still comes back as a zero. It has no, it doesn't understand the English language. It just understands probabilities, which again, I think is very, really cool. All right, very last step. Let's actually use, now that we see that it seems to work, uh, now we can actually use our testing data, which again, we can only use that one last time. And so, uh, number pound sign I'm actually going to test my model now so uh, again the same thing that I did before I need to convert so I haven't converted my test data yet so I need to do x underscore test underscore count which is doing the CV dot transform on my x underscore test uh, again we hadn't done that yet we got to convert our test data now to that same matrix of values where it's just a word count and now to figure out how well our model does, we do model.score. Um, so again, we can do predict, and it's going to predict which ones are which. Score does all the predictions and then measures it against uh, the actual testing data. So I need to score x underscore test underscore count uh, against my y variable, which was just y test. And again, I don't have to convert that. We run our code. and. <laughs> Our model scores a 0.9856 accuracy. So it is accurate 98.5% of the time with, again, a, a sample of 5,000 emails and change where it was 4,700 were regular and was it 700 were spam, I think. Um, so with a relatively small data set, we still achieved almost 99% accuracy with naive bays, which is just incredible. Um, I, I hope you, you, you can appreciate how awesome this is and the power of naive bays, where again, we make so many naive assumptions that the order of the words doesn't matter. It, we choose words just by their counts and just by the different counts of the words, we can determine whether it is spam or not. Um, which again, I think is really, really cool. All right, so now that you've finished this um, and you have you know, your, your, your program written, make sure that every single uh, cell is commented. Oh, here's one that I just kind of looked at and forgot to comment. You can either comment it or you can use the scissors to cut it, um, but everything should be commented in this case. Um, make sure it's saved. Make sure you export it, upload it, so I can check it. And I hope you kind of enjoyed this and found it at least half as interesting as I did. And as always, take care of yourselves.